to the podcast where we introduce you to incredible humans who share their journeys with the mission to inspire you to harness your own inner tenacity to drive your life and career forward. And now, your host, Adam Posner. We are back with our second guest of the day here. Things are heating up. Day one of Transform. I'm here with Mike Politich from This Way Global. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So if you wouldn't mind, tell us who you are and what you do best. Uh, well, who I am, I've been in the HR tech space for about 32 years. So I'm an old guy. Graybeard, as they like to call them, right? Yeah, Graybeard, exactly. Silverbacks. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that, that doesn't make me smart. It just makes me survivor. Uh, I'm a survivor. Uh, but um, I, I, by chance, got into the HR tech space. My wife started a recruitment marketing agency uh, back in the 90s, and I joined, I quit my job in mergers and acquisitions to, to join and build the company. Wow, so you quit a job in M&A mm -hmm. to support your wife in what her passion was. Yeah. I love that, man. She's, she was, and we decided early on, um, we couldn't have two chiefs. So she was CEO and I was CFO and COO. So uh, it, it, we, it ran really, we did what we intended. We built that up and sold it to TMP Worldwide back in 2001. Awesome. And then I, uh, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2004, 20 years ago. And uh, at that time, I, I decided I needed to take control and uh, I wasn't going to work for a large company anymore and help smaller companies that could have a real impact on the space. So tell us about This Way Global. What's the mission? What's the product? This Way Global uh, has developed uh, uh, AI-based sourcing and matching tools to help companies uh, identify diverse candidates and uh, and source um, from a pool other than LinkedIn. Uh, so, so you mean to tell me there's more people out there than just LinkedIn? Yeah. <laughs> there's a whole world of people out there inside of LinkedIn. Yeah. So what, what makes it different? What makes us different is... Um, well, the, the three things. So first, we uh, our product mitigates bias. It, it, you can't use it and uh, either unconscious or conscious bias. You can't introduce that in the sourcing tool. It strips all the identifiers away and only only sources or only judges people based on the skills that they either bring or are inferred by, based on their story. Let's pause on that point for a second here because I was just having a conversation with Donald Knight. Chief People Officer at Greenhouse beforehand. And we're talking about, we could talk, let's get a little deeper on this one for a second because it's interesting. Yeah. How are we using, how do we ensure that the inputs for an AI platform are not biased themselves? The inputs from the, uh, from the user, from the recruiter? On yeah. both sides. And so our tool only allows you to uh, search for skills and location it, 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 and, and it, even an educational level, but not you can't source based on a specific school or a specific language. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to eliminate all those areas. And the EEOC uh, has even looked at our our uh, software and and declared that it is uh, it is uh, okay. it mitigates bias in an effective way. Interesting. And what was one of the, uh, when you were building out this tool and you were testing it, was there a hypothesis or a thesis that might have been proven wrong when put into practice? Yes. Is that? Um, oh. Just right, because you have ideas what you're building, you have ideas what this should be, what it should look like. But when the rubber hits the road, maybe it needs to be tweaked or optimized. Well, the, the company has been around for about nine years. And the our founder, Angela Hood, she started in the construction industry and couldn't get a job as, a, and as an engineer until she changed her name based on the advice of a mentor to uh, A.L. Hood instead of Angela Hood. I like that. And uh, she immediately got offers in a, in a very um, biased industry. 
and she that's why she founded the company so she went to cambridge and studied there and she said that in developing the software it failed more times in the first seven years than it succeeded and so it just it took a lot of testing and evaluation and a lot of work uh, uh, by our engineers to get that from and so if we fast forward to today who's the core customer who really gets the most benefit out of uh, utilizing and implementing the product our core customer is uh, any anybody who's uh, any organization probably a thousand employees not although our software is used by small companies as well but that wants a diverse workforce that wants it wants to change the status quo well the stat the status quo is something we talk about but what's keeping you up at night as far as ai um and it doesn't have to be necessarily related to hr tech yeah. i mean like it's funny i'm i'm old enough to really remember <laughs> to remember terminator and like should we really be fearing the machines are going to take over, Mike. You know what? I, I think there's reason to be wary of technology that is not uh, universally managed in an ethical way. Um, we're big proponents of ethical AI, and um, it's very. Uh, what keeps me up at night are probably the same things that keep you up at night in AI. It's you know the ability to to fool people in an election year, for example. Well, I mean, deep fakes, yeah, let's talk about deep fakes or like whether it be election year media. I mean, we've seen deep fakes with like celebrities or pornography. There's a lot of scary, yeah. really good yeah. uses of it with Until mouth you, movements and putting words in there. Until you study it and see the person has three hands, but uh, but still it's good. It's got, it's so effective. And I've seen um, recent, you uh, know, Political campaigns where one candidate is supposedly surrounded by black, uh, the kind of black uh, voters, and they it was completely manipulated. It's un it's unbelievable. So how's the average human supposed to decipher what's real and what's not? That's a good question. It is a good. If question. I if I had the answer to that, I wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah, so I know. Yeah, I know. Um, but we're we're live here, so it's about seeking the truth. And if there's something that you see. Fact checking, but what is? But what does he, Mike? What does even freaking fact checking mean these days with the false information that's out there? I mean, you have. Like, where's the source of truth? Yeah. Now we're now we're just now we're just riffing here. We're gonna get political. No, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> that is not what I'm doing on the show. But we can talk about the source of truth. What yeah. is the source of truth these days? Yeah, I know it, it's it's very difficult. We um, we actually publish uh, our algorithms and and how they operate. It's your open source. Uh, we don't open source, but uh, when we're uh, speaking with customers and partners, right. we are very upfront in allowing them to evaluate our technology uh, so that they can determine whether we are walking the law. That is, that is fascinating. So from a, from a company perspective, um, where are you seeing the true green grass whiteboard, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, opportunities because if you walk around this convention floor, I think everyone and their mother. If I'm looking right out over here, AI, 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 AI. I mean, li literally. I mean, I see AI every, everywhere I'm looking. Yeah, it's been that way for a while. So it's not the buzzword du jour. No, before, like in the last four or five years, everybody before before uh, GP Chat GPT, there was the fear of AI, but everybody had to have AI in their name. <laughs> Now everybody .io, wants .io, AI. They, you never know. And it, it, in the past, it was it was quote unquote AI. It wasn't real. AI. No, it was um it was like moderate machine learning, right? It was yeah. using some like uh, ML, AML, but it wasn't it wasn't fully there. And I think it's exciting. Yeah, I do too. I think the the, the real white space is what we're what we were, we're focusing on now, which is we have this partnership with IBM Watson Orchestrate. And the OG, the OG of AI. OG and and uh, Watson, finally, Watson's cool. Watson's a cool, yeah, cool dude. They finally Check. figured out uh, what to do with it. I mean, it made a uh, stuttered start uh, years ago, and they, it, they didn't have the domain expertise. 
So we are their only partner in the HR vertical, and they're what Watson Orchestrate does is it, it automates workflows and allows a company to work with any of these companies out here that they want to work with, not have to buy the success factors and hope and work day that hope that it does everything they want it to do. They can work with their preferred vendors and then uh, easily integrate under a single pane of glass, like a single Love screen. That. Optimized. Yeah. But let's, let's talk about IBM for a minute. Like. That's an incredible partner to have. What would you say that you and your team, you and the team, have taught IBM? Oh, it, it, a great deal. Um, we they actually looked to us to uh, give them a roadmap, their roadmap for um, the HR tech space. Not only that, but the build out of the uh, Watson Orchestrate piece and how it operates within these companies. So we um, we have weekly calls with their development team, their engineering team, and we are constantly driving the product forward, make it more effective. That's, that's, that's fascinating. What, um, it's funny because we're a 35 person company. It's uh, this behemoth it's of their big blue. Uh, but, but I think that, I mean, listen, IBM has been around for Jeez, I'm going to throw a number out there. I'm going to guess 75 years? Yeah, I, I, it's got to be that a fair at least number? that. Is that a, maybe longer? Well, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I, let's, let's, let's fun fact on the, on the 75 years. Ben could Google that while he's sitting there. <laughs> I'm kidding, Ben. Don't worry. Um, we're just talking about IBM over here. But where are you seeing, listen, I, I really believe in, 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 in part of my French here, I really truly, truly believe in, fucking around and finding out i'm a big believer in that yeah. because that's how you that's how you experiment and you yeah. try and you fail and you learn and you grow but what what would you say has been one of the biggest learnings or aha moments for you guys in the last year as far as you developing the product and the roadmap um it, the biggest aha was that ibm is has built a very strong product but it isn't flawless and I, the allowing, they've allowed us the space to co-develop uh, the product to make it uh, the best in, in its class. And they are, they're not, I, I wouldn't have expected IBM to allow a small company that much impact on their roadmap. Love that. I think that's a changing of the minds where it's the old guard understands that like they need to outsource knowledge you need to outsource let's talk about let's talk about your team a little bit um geographically are you global team we are uh geographically us uh our product is global our the database we've built up of uh, 169 million diverse candidates that aren't in linkedin uh they're global let's but let's riff on that for a second there first where are folks aside from linkedin from a sourcing perspective um, and, and listen, we're talking about white collar jobs, blue collar jobs, a lot of healthcare jobs for not a ton of doctors, nurses, healthcare practitioners. They aren't on LinkedIn. Yeah. So, from a data source, where are you guys going to pull these folks in? We have 8,500 partners that we've built over time, and we can we did just like adding new partners. They're HBCUs, they're veterans organizations, they're affinity groups, they're they're naturally diverse populations of people and women's organizations and and uh, but they aren't they aren't all they're, they're diverse they're right. black white everything in between and um, and they're um, all passive candidates they aren't people who are submitting their resume so it's kind of that uh, that area that everybody's been trying to reach that we've been able to develop and that's just it's happened organically, which is the it's just been the gratifying thing. We haven't Organic actively si sought out partners. We couldn't keep up with the women. There's been so many that would come up. Yeah, we're ca we catch a little bit of background noise as the award yeah. ceremony is going Sorry. on. So, Mike, we're shaky here. We're gonna no, cause we, what happens with the mic is sometimes you forget when you're having a good conversation. Oh, not in this paper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry. But Mike, that. I want to thank you so much for joining us here today. What, who are you excited? I shouldn't say who in particular because we don't want to fluff anyone's feathers here. But 
What What are you looking forward to the most, and what do you want to get out of HR Transforming for yourself? What I What I like about Transform is how it's uh, made. It's leveled the playing fields for large and small companies. I like going to the startups because they have the most passion, and they they have they're doing things differently, but it, it puts them on equal footing with the large players. So. I, I'm excited to just go around and talk to the the owners and the founders and and uh, see what's new. I, I love it. Let's uh, let's end this one. Um, let's get a little let's get a little personal here. Um, what is your word of power? What is your word that keeps you going, motivated, strong, and fighting every day? Resilience. Uh, I think no matter where you are in your life. Life throws you a curveball sometimes, and being resilient and not letting that curveball dominate your life or take take over your uh, the, the, your negative thoughts is uh, is the best approach. I I was in a clinical trial uh, that I got the placebo, and I improved while the drug failed, and it was because of the placebo effect. I believed I was going to get better. Wow! So, you know that that's 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 why I think resilience is important. I love that word. Resilience is a resilience is definitely one of my core tenets here, Mike. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Where could folks find you? Where could they learn more about Thrive? Uh, this way global. Sorry, this way global. <laughs> this way global dot com. And uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome. a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate you. Thank you. Over the last three years, how much market volatility have you experienced in your business? How many times have you had to hire quickly only to find yourself in a position a few months later with not enough roles to keep your recruitment team busy? Now, what if you could work with a flexible recruitment partner that you could scale up and down based on your needs without compromising on quality or culture? The good news is that solution is finally here. Matcher is a tech-enabled RPO player that made its mark in Europe and is now taking over the U.S. by storm. Matcher combines technology, experience, and flexibility for startups, scale-ups, and corporates to quickly deliver on their hiring needs. Now, whether you're hiring across engineering, go-to-market, or GNA, Matcher got you covered. That's why Matcher's embedded sourcing, coordination, and recruiting services are trusted by companies like TikTok, Booking.com, Miro, Grammarly, Stripe, and more. To find out how Matcher can be your flexible recruitment partner, visit Matcher.io. That's M-A-T-C-H-R dot I-O. And make sure you tell them you heard about it on the podcast. Thanks. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode soon, jam-packed with more incredible humans. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and sharing. To join the conversation, search The Pausecast on LinkedIn. And to catch up on past episodes and more info, please visit www.thepausecast.com.